loaded up and ready. X6, one more win, they take this series. So, see if they can close it out here, if Kongju can answer. Fans staying behind them. Trying to will this team to a victory. See what Kongdu is going to be piecing together. Something tells me Kong is not going to be operating on that Tara, so likely just going to see. Yep, the Lucio going to come through. So Tracer Sombra on the attack. Genji Tracer on the defense here for so X6. Not running the Sombra at all. Just wanting to defend here with Godspeed's Genji. They're not running Choyo Ben, so it's going to be a little bit tougher to maximize damage in a zone. Maybe that's why they're taking this approach to two things, but Kongdu Ben there is going to sneak around the left side right now. They've got a positional advantage up here on the high ground. I mean, this is definitely a, a bit of an adaptation. We don't see too many teams go around the left side as their first choice. Right is usually the big one. Get up onto the high ground, poke down onto the members that are sitting onto the point, but instead they're just going to push right in and start taking this one. We really have that first tick as this point goes ahead, pokes his head in. Got to stop this one from going up. That's going to be the first one coming through. Now getting closer to a second tick. Or the Kongdu Pantera here, hack coming down from Young Chin, will just burn down Godspeed, X6 already giving up a lot of ground, and Bebe will fall as well. But he's trying to stay alive, no fight goes forward, but he's gonna get taken out. It seems like Kongdu Pantera with his map pick will just go ahead and scoop up point A very rapidly. We'll see if they can get any sort of snowball ready to go, because Young Jin has that EMP. They, the big mistake for X6 was giving control of the point to a Moira cop. We don't see Moira on attack on this map very often on point A, even though you could argue that it's easier to heal through that and sustain there, only if you can get onto the point, which X6 allowed. Here's that EMP you were talking about, looking for the back angle here. Going ready to, to go, they throw that down, deny the bubble, but John Chick is still gonna get taken out. No Z falls first. No spine will get taken down. No primal. Comes in here from Shoe Bill looking for a pick. Doesn't find anything. Now the transcendence out from Baby to get everybody in onto the point. Not me. Has that Dragon Blade ready to go, but wants to hold on to it. You can see the members of Kongdu are backing off. So he's going to feel perfectly safe and comfortable with keeping that one in the inventory for now. And the transcendence being really cost efficient here for X6, only really using the one that holds spin. Delaying the entire push despite losing no smite. That was a really good EMP and good focus fire by Kondu Panther to prevent no smite from using the primal rage, but didn't end up with the tick, as you say, but they've got a massive time bank because of X6's failure to respect the Moira, which they're still continuing to run. Kondu might make a switch after this coalescence push. Not to be. Poking in from behind, this corridor of in on the shoe bill. That's where he's trying to aim his focus. Dashes down, looks for the Lucio, finds him with a second swipe. Coma, sticking out of the fight, and now should just be able to finish off Luffy. Both supports eliminated here by the hand of Godsby. DQB will get traded, but that's about it. He's going to have the faster run back. He can keep building up for the EMPs. Won't have been there, held at bay here, but still have 5 minutes 20 on the clock. Let's looks see. like. How much they can get done that time? Kongdu Panther looks to continue to run this Moira uh, on attack here rather than switching to the Zenyatta, which means they're going to lack damage, but they're running this this composition that has a little bit more mobility to it that can find backline picks, and the Moira can help the, the tank war connect. So if Yongjin and Decay focus on the tank line, then Luffy can theoretically outheal Changshik and Shubil to win that fight and then give this the uh, supports or open the support line. But it's going to be an easier said than done. That's going to be the EMP coming down from Young Jin, coupled in with the town barrier out from Hongdu. And they just go ahead and storm in on top of the point. No spine pops the primal rage, but three members already gone down. It's just Roki here with the Ana trying to stay in it. Bebe and BB, BQB just now coming back here from their deaths. But they're in onto the point, they're gonna have that first tick. The members of X6 have to pile in, but there's no tanks available. Second one coming through. Do they just finish this? They finally get in. Godsby dashes in onto the point. Bebe with the transcendence helping to keep everybody alive. Self-destruct takes down Godsby. That's it. They're off the point. They can't get in in time. And that is gonna be the cap. 419 on the clock here for the finish for Kongu. It had all happened exactly as I described. The EMP leads the charge. They prevent the D.Va from getting back into her mech. No Smite is able to use Primal Rage, but he's being out-healed even with the Primal Rage by the threat of Decay, who's keeping Ana away from range to actually heal the Primal Rage Winston. I saw Decay actually end up going in there to actually threaten this, to kill the sports after No Smite died. Godspeed got caught between a rock and a hard place and was killed while he was trying to harass, but 
the entire composition was split by that EMP, and so the supports were alone, zoned out by Decay, who was harassing. No Smite goes down there, they focus him, and then Decay has the opportunity to further commit to the supports heavily, try to drop down that Pulse Bomb, and then it all just ends with that self-destruct. Godspeed is unfortunately getting clipped by it in the end, probably thinking he was out of line of sight there, or just did not have his jumps available, because he was just barely on the edge of escaping it, so did get killed there. The point ends, but good focus fire here, removing the tanks, having that Moira means that the tanks on the side of Kongdu Panther were just able to burst through despite the faster runbacks coming uh, from the side of X6 there with the obviously point B defense. Let's see if Youngjin wants to run the defensive McCree. Looks like a Junkrat to me. So similar style of defense here where you protect a massive DPS here. This time going to be the Junkrat who has extra peel potential. And then you just look to boost him and he just does massive damage to gatekeep. Similar to the McCree, but not as much tank busting, especially with the on I pick here. Looking to try to counter the dive more than try to counter the tanks. Looking to kill Genji if he threatens too deep. Wants to get into the back line. He just might be killed by a good concussion mine. That's exactly why he threw that trap there up on top of the gate. He's going to be expecting Godspeed to be running the Genji yet again. And it knows that he won't have much time to react if he wall climbs up there. Try to start poking out with the shurikens. We'll see. If he does get caught, he might have been able to spot it. He just keeps cheating around. Reflection comes through as well, so Godspeed can be fine. Now we'll just go ahead and start taking a look at the choke point. Big Heald and I came through there from Luffy. Yeah, no, this might have to kite back around the corner for the moment. Got pushed again. Again, looking like X6 is going to take the normal route. He's going through over onto the right side, trying to get onto the high ground. In the meantime, Rhea's going to be up front here by the point, but they may get taken down. They will get decay in the end. The chunk kick as well falls. The rest comes in. They bring the Tracer back into the battle. Only man there is still have plenty of ways to stay into this one, but BQP can land a massive pole bomb that can upset everything. Throws it in. Nearly gets the pop there onto the back, but Shingo manages to stay alive. That Bionic Grenade comes through and helps keep him nice and healthy. So two ticks already going over to the side of X6. In the back, Decay trying to get the execution there onto Baby yet again. Does come up with that one. BQB taking down by Luffy, who has a nano boost ready to go. X6 still looking to get the cap right here and have a massive time bank. Older men there are struggling. Decay goes down. Koma just came back up. That's going to be the cap. 6.44 on the clock. So X6 having a similar time bank to try to exceed the finish here on the side of Kongdu Very much a zoning push, a very careful one. Not trying to dive on top of the Junkrat, but force him out of the range to do massive damage with his left click. You can see he's only just now going to have the Rip Tire available, despite being boosted because the approach for X6 didn't allow him to do damage. They were well spread and they forced the jump rat out of the point, so he just couldn't actually do much. The positioning was good there from Rhea to make sure he couldn't do damage. Oh, well, they're looking for Decay. Has that Discord Orb on, throws down the Pulse Bomb, not going to be finding any picks, and uses the recall to try to stay alive. And X6 piles in on top of the point. That's going to be Rhea throwing down the self destruct, trying to get back into the back, finds Coma, but the Shoe Bell finds no fight, and now with Baby going down, Roki as well off the backside of the Rip Tire. X6 Gaming is going to say, okay, you know what? We're perfectly happy with that. We only invested the self-destruct. Look at how many ultimates we have ready to go. Five currently in the war chest. It's a very big attack war chest, as you say, to come over here and take this point. Youngjin will switch off of the Junkrat, much less useful on this point. It's only useful, really, if your opponent just continually attacks up the staircase there, where you can corral them into that. But against a more mobile composition, it's going to be pretty weak. As you can see, it's the so the uh, super switch here. And let's see what this attack is going to do if they're going to commit all their ultimates and just look to try to see which, if they can chain them together one by one. That's going to be Godspeed falling right off the bat, so no Dragon Blade going to be available in this fight and maybe also kick him down. They keep draining these ultimates away from Kondu, so I don't think that X6 is that perturbed by these pushes here from them. They're building up. They still have the five ultimates. They got the Primal Rage away from Shangshik. Yep. Almost a ways away from a Transcendence. They might finish this with a smaller time make, a slightly smaller one than Kongju currently has. But they can still pile in, just dump five ultimates the in is, onto the point and try to win it. The thing is, what they want to do is make sure they have efficiency, right? They only want to use their ults if they have guaranteed targets. Like, if Godspeed can get on the support line, he's going to pull the blade. 
Same with those Smite. If he can get into a good position where he's going to do much with the Primal Rage, that's what he's going to do it. Here comes the fight. Transcend's actually going to start this. So they think they can make it happen, but God's being taken out. Yet again, even with the Transcendence there, just couldn't get close enough in time. Pulse Bomb going to be eaten up there by that Defense Matrix, but doesn't find anything here from Decay. Now Bear here now in X6. Wants this to be the fight, but all this could be turned around by Young Jin, who's got an EMP ready to go. Goes it down, takes out Bebe, and X6. Now things are unraveling for them. Not only do they have less time than Kobe finished with, but they still just don't have that many ultimates ready to go. They can get to the Dragon dragon Blade. God's Beast has been taken down twice now at the start of the fight, even with the Transcendence being oh, invested. Asleep. And Rhea <laughs> is going to be, gonna so be staggered so, so hard. Oh, God. So staggered here. Like, not can't even use that health pack if you wanted to. I mean, even if he gets the pilot remech, like, they'll just kill him instantly. Oh, anyway. yeah. So, very frustrating for the, the Diva here. So, this is burning a large amount of the time of X6. They just could not actually heal through the damage there for Godsby. Couldn't get close enough, like you said, to pull the blade because they had everything else set up. So, not only did they use several ultimates and basically waste them. But Kong Duban there is building up many of their own. Burn through that time bank with the Diva. Worst case, they have a full extra minute of time. That's if X6 completed it right now. They're taking this right side approach now, but this is mostly just a building push for BQB. He doesn't even have close to an EMP right now. Yeah, it's gonna be a while. Finally does get that hack there on a shoe build. He goes low with his forward orb. Changchik taken down. BQB does spray out for that one, and now it's halfway there. Godsby dashes in, takes out the pilot Diva. And the Dragon Blade still drawn for a couple seconds, but just can't find anybody who slashes in the air. But oh, they're kicking up onto the point. Second one coming through. Did they just let this go? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, All right. this is just really good zoning there by Godspeed. And no one could really get back onto the point because the tanks were bursted. So you don't want to try to buy time as a support if you think your tank can get there in time. Just saw the demon throw in the sun just, the last second. They had people on the high ground. Genji was throwing Like, it was kind of a C9. Like, I will give you that. It was kind of a C9, but it was just a... Uh, and they had faith their tanks would get there in time after the respawn, but they did not obviously get there in time. So it looked they, silly, but like the idea there was, okay, Diva comes in again, self-destruct remac by the time that we get there. But if the supports just try to walk in, they die, then they basically played greedy. They were thinking that they could keep the supports alive and buy time and then buy much more time rather than just send the supports in there by 10 seconds and lose them and then the cap would come through. So it was definitely a mistake for sure, but I can see the reasoning there. I'm going to see, a, a C4 and a half. Like, obviously, they weren't winning the fight. Home well, duty, you know, they had given up so much priority there onto the point. But they certainly could have delayed and made this time bank a bit shorter for the side of X6. They have 247 there at the end. So about a minute and a half. Yeah, a minute and a half. It's about behind the likes of Kongu Panthera. It's still just odd that they wouldn't go for the, you know, the super desperate delay of plays with the main wall coming in just to try to drain that time bank down as much as possible and force a full hold situation for X6. Yeah. Well, so, odd, but we'll see how this plays out, whether or not X6 can still manage to find a win so, with their misfortune. Let's see what they, the defensive setup here is going to be the jump right again. Let's see if they can actually make sure Youngjin stays in the position to do damage the whole time. Well, this is going to make it easier when he's getting picks already. Pushed away again, though. Going to get taken down. Youngjin does find that one. Build it up for the Riptire. Big bionic grenade comes through. Godspy has to use that recall. Now they're chasing down, looking for Chung. Shing is just dashing around in and out of that bubble, but will get taken down in the end. Luffy brought back into the fight by Kalma. And X6 is going to be held at bay here for the moment, just they shy of getting that first hit. They couldn't force the Junkrat away this time. He was able to get that pick early, and they just could not actually stick to him. So he did a lot of damage. Look at the difference. This time he's at 70% of that rip tire already here after the first push. So in a much better position than they were last time here with the Junkrat pick. Okay, up onto the high ground, just wanting to hunt down Bebe yet again. Dashes in, gets on top of the Zenyatta, cuts around the side, and with Good the up will take him down. She builds out of the mech again, but it doesn't matter because everybody on the side of X6 is being held at bay yet again. Get close to that first tick, but they cannot finish it off. Yep, we were being critical about the target firing of Kongdu Panthera, but really coordinated, calling out that Bebe was out of position, going in there, collapsing on him in that room, preventing him from returning to his team, getting these staggered respawns. And when you're talking about really small time banks, sub three minutes, you know, it's rough when you're losing these members. They've only got 70 seconds, realistically, to push this through. And they're going to have to, again, get into the position where they can punish the Junk Rat. Well, Chunk Chick's going to go down. Pulse Bomb used. Now Riptire coming in from Young Jin. They'll find a catch. Spotted out the Sombra. 
Doesn't see anything now. Tire being focused down. Comes over the top. Still manages to get the pick there onto the Tracer, but not going to be the most valuable target. Had he been able to find Bebe or Roki, uh -oh, speaking that would have been a huge good defense matrix there, denying all those hits in from Decay. Can't find anything now. CQB poking around from the side, looking for an opening to use that EMP. Might not have to. Young just gonna get, get taken down, but so does BQB. He's out of the fight. The game goes for it, immediately eliminates that enemy Sombra. Good fight, man. This is the fine love beat. Jonathan comes primal. back in, has the primal rage ready to go. Trinson is down from Bebe. Sound barrier ready from Roki. Dump the truck from Shuville, not finding anything, just buying a little bit of space here. Onto the point, but now Chongqing goes down. Koma, gonna fall as well. And maybe X6 might be able to get this cap, even if it's in OT. They're gonna start moving up now as Godspeed comes back in they with hold, Widowmaker. They hold the, the uh, uh, EMP as well, so they're, they're gonna actually get this. gonna try to, they are gonna get this, but they're gonna try to capitalize on a second push as well. Coming in here, BQB leading the charge, wants to get into a position to find the EMP. Decay is already trying to find him, flanking over here, seeing if he's trying to sneak around the backside. They know that's going to be their opening to attack. Already, this switching the soldiers. Very bad for Palm Dude that they were able to get that full cap there on to A. EMP in, Godspeed finds the pick there on a Chang Shik. Decay goes to the pulse, gets no spike. Nothing more than that, but still going to be a very nice pick up there for them. Down barrier comes in, X6 trying to take the fight. They want to go as far as they possibly can. Rhea takes it back into the back of Decay, just skirting around the outside of this fight with the Ashes, just trying to lock down somebody, but hasn't been able to find a real target here for himself. Healers keeping each other alive as they get the first tick halfway to the next. BQB goes down, Transcend is out here from Bebe to try to get the rest of them into the fight. But they need no smite, they need Rhea to get back in here. No smite now arrived. 85% looking for the Primal Rage, could buy some more time, could buy some more percentage. If he can get that one available, now has it. Okay, comes down, Pulse Bomb in. Not gonna be getting the kill, but manages to follow up there on Hiroki, setting up the damage. Now Bebe trying to out-duel him, cannot do so. They get pushed off the point in the end as they build up 48.2% on B. Yep, very coordinated attack here though by X6, getting in there with the EMP BQB leading things off. The Godspeed switch to Soldier ends up being very impactful there, doing a lot of damage after the EMP comes through. They couldn't out sustain and they had no time bank to reset, so basically had one shot to get something done on point B. The opening EMP allowed them to get at least that first tick, more than half, I think, of the second one, so still a decent amount built. After failing several times to shut down Youngjin's Junkrat, this worked very well for them. So despite having that rough start, they end up with a lot more, I think, that they were expecting to get with this time bank, so they're gonna be feeling really good. You have to be give credit where credit is due for Panthera, though, just buying time for Junkshin to get back onto the point using that nano boost, for example, to keep the D.Va alive. Those are the, the kind of things that will buy you a lot of time that will burn through the time bank of X6. Now, one of the things I think critically there for X6 that was a major botch was, I believe that Nosemite died without using the Primal Rage. Never heard it go off, had that one ready to yep. go when he jumped back into the fight, and I don't think he ever used it to buy more time to get more members in on top of that point. So critical error there, cost them potentially a second tick. But already, X6 could be feeling pretty good with what they were able yeah. to accomplish. Really good focus fire. Finally, we're seeing it from Kongdu Panthera on these tanks. We saw it to open the point earlier, and then on that last defense, no primal rage. Let's see. Well, the defensive setup here is a little bit surprising, actually, not running again. The McCree or the Junkrat, but actually it, it, even avoiding the Genji now, just sticking with Sombra and the Tracer, trying to full hold this one. Oh man, Shubil, he's in a rough spot. We'll get spammed back up there by Luffy. Look at that, 42% built with this. BQB is trying to just farm off Diva right now. And now push it in. Spinrolo jumps up to the side with the Translocator, and yet again, it's gonna be Kongu Manthera wrapping around the left side. We'll be able to get the hack there on that health pack. And the K is dangerously low. They cannot finish him off, though. He'll get healed back up here in the end. Spotted out, going low. As BQB just fires away from the top side, gets the hack in on the chunk. Shit, can they punish him? The answer is going to be yes. He'll fall as Godspeed finds the kill. And BQB is just getting closer and closer to that EMP yet again. Rhea knocked out of the mech. We'll be able to trade one right there back on the shoe bill as they finish him off. And you can see it's just going to be the bailout from Koma. And Rhea yep. now just going to be spamming away with a pistol. Doesn't want to jump off. Wants to get this mech back available for himself. It's really impressive to see how much X6 can coordinate around BQB and killing Shoebill's 
mech. And also just building EMPs consistently with that. Part of the reason why they're running the Zenyatta is so they can burst down the mech repeatedly. Let's see if Shubil can prevent this from happening. Look at the positioning of the Winston right now. They're going to collapse in. Look, onto Shubil again. EMP here. He's the first target to be focused down. He's yeah. at the mech. And Rhea made it back into the mech. On does go down. Coalescence comes through. Rhea trying to stay alive. We'll get spammed back up as the Transcendence comes in from Bebe. He's going to be hacked out. Can't use the self-destruct. They will go ahead and poop him away. Lands right in on top of Young Shin, who just falls off the side of the map. And X6 will yet again maintain control. They're looking for the stagger kills as No Spike goes forward. Trying to burn down Luffy. Gets him in the end. The bubble there a bit too late from Chung Shake. Holding to Panthera. You have multiple ultimates ready to go. The sound barrier nearly Look there from this, Oma. Uh, Look at the position of Snow Smite. He just waits. Shubil leads in with the D Matrix out, and then they collapse onto him. They try to hack him with BQB so that they could just left click him, build the EMP, demech him, and, ru and ruin the pushes. This time they have the EMP to start things off, but look at the split of X6. Already found the Sobra as well. Yep. Gonna get spotted out. You get the hack there onto the Mega Pack yet again, but the Pulse oh. comes in! Doesn't find the kill though. Waste like the translocator cooldown. Yeah, it was looking like a very dangerous situation there. Does go ahead and have to burn that one down and out to Kate. He's gonna get hacked out. Now Barrier comes in from X6. That's by Cold to Panthera. No EMP from BQB to try to deny away the shielding. And Rhea is out of the back. The self charge from Shubil. By two. BQB and Nerf fight both eliminated the leap there from Changshik. Takes down the baby demon. Godsby is traded out by Decay. The team wipe as Bebe falls. Cap comes in, Kong to Panthera. Gonna have just shy of two minutes on the clock to try to close this one. 48.3% is what they need. And they had the EMP there. They had, that was the thing they needed to open this point. It was almost ruined by that pulse bomb attempt, but shut down there in the end is the defense of X6. Much larger time bank, but again, you don't normally get these with just one push, and Kongdu Panther used everything they had to capture point A, whereas X6 had a lot of tools left over when they did it, so it's gonna be a lot harder here. Diamond, she will hack down immediately. BQB now gonna have that EMP ready to go. The lessons comes in from Luffy, trying to keep everybody alive, and it's just not working out. The shoot bill and Young did both have gone down now. Young Chick falls as well with the primal rage available. Kongdu is best an ultimate there from the support side. They get punished for it. Now just have the primal rage and a pulse bomb with a minute left on the clock. Big six nearly there for X6. Yeah, X6 is a fantastic position. It's gonna spread here again. Oven, have a, no smite onto the high ground so you can get that extra damage from the leap and then just contrib collapse on whoever exposes themselves first. It's been Shubil every time they've been focusing down in these fights, but they'll take what they can get. Decay trying to look for another flank to distract and disrupt the formation here. Look at this, coming around, harassing, showing himself, trying to just get onto the point. Pulse is ready to go, but still has to find a target, yet it would seem has to use the recall. So if he wants to go in deep, he could get punished for this. Rhea, out of the mech. Nanabu's coming through, I believe, in onto no spike. Pulse gets thrown down, doesn't find the hit there. Onto the auto, the rest of the team is just crumbling around him. I think X6 might have been able to do this. Godspeed. Gonna go low, recalls up, doesn't need it. Orb of Harmony's there, and Kongdu have one more chance. 10 seconds remaining. 48.3% is the target, but they might just be held. They might just be losing this series here on Hanamura. Look at the split. You can't get more than one person with that EMP. Not gonna happen. Wanting to use it now in the fight, but they have to get onto the point. They're all just being held in the chunk right now. No spike keeping them contained here. Up near the front, self-destruct in. Match on both sides. Rhea looking for the pickoffs. Doesn't find anything yet. EMP thrown in by Young Jin, but now the Transcendence comes down from the side of X6, nullifying everything that Kongdu can throw at them. The sound barrier doesn't help them stay in the fight that much. Loki will fall. Shangshik traded out for no spike. Kongdu desperately trying to win this one, but they're still not even at the first tick. Rhea popped down. Shubil as well. And X6, they're gonna have those faster runbacks. They're gonna have the advantage, and with Luffy going down, they might be able to close this one out, but Decay, he does not want to surrender. Finds the pick there, on to Godby. BQB's dead, Roki's dead. No spike coming back in, has the primal range to buy some time, but Maybe. critically, Pokemon and Thera cannot leave the point. If they do, it is going to take down. Oh no spike goes up, the hack comes through. He's back and awake, has the Lucio there, into the corner, trying to finish him off, zaps in the death, but it's not gonna happen. Koma gets the kill there on the no spike. BQB's back in, Zhangshik dead, Koma now goes down as Godsby scoops up the kill. They step up for a second. Hack comes down for BQP, and that is going to be it. A very hard fought battle, but X6 win the War of Attrition in the end. They will win this series as they take Katamura. X6 is having a better understanding of where to stand on point B. We very rarely see attack Sombra on point B. Obviously, this was overtime rounds in a very unique circumstance. We're talking less than a minute and a half of time. You almost never see the attack Sombra in Korea on Hanamura B because 
everyone can spread against it. That's why I said the EP is never going to hit one, more than one person against the setup of X6. So it was very difficult to use Young Jin's EMP as a means of engage. And they were just looking for the one, the big, amazing EMP that we saw from BQB. He was able to make it happen because they underestimated the attack of X6. Kong and Panthera were not positioned in such a way to prevent this. The counter dive setups here from X6 are just far superior and they're able to punish the approaches of Kongdu Panthera over and over. And Achilles, this loss here for Kongdu Panthera means their hopes of going to playoffs are no 